our lesson today, Sunday school lesson for Sunday uh, for February 21st is Priscilla called to the ministry. Our background scripture is Acts 18, 1 through 26, Romans 16, 3 through 4. And our devotional reading was Colossians 4, 7 through 15. Our aim for change. By the end of this lesson, we will research the life and ministry of Priscilla and her husband, Aquila. Secondly, we will appreciate the ministry of those who explain the way of the gospel with accuracy. And number three, we'll seek opportunity to use our gift or ability to further the gospel. Our key verse is, Greet of Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus, who have their life laid down their, their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also the churches of the Gentiles. That's our key verse is Romans 6, 3, and 4. That was King James. I'll read the focal uh, verses. I'll read 18, 1 through 3. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. And found a Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, later come to, later came, lately came from Italy, which is what with his wife Priscilla. Three. And because he was at the same craft, he abode with them and walked. But for they, for by their occupation, they was tent makers. Let me go and read eighteen through twenty-six. And Paul he tarried there for yet a while. And then while they took his leave of, of the brethren and sailed thence to into Syria, and with his pen Priscilla and Aquila having shown his head for it had a vow. And he came to Ephesus and left them there. But he himself entered into the synagogue and, and reasoned with the Jews. When they declared desired him to tarry a longer time with them, he consented not, but bade him them farewell, saying, I must by all means keep this feast that cometh in Jerusalem, but I will return again unto you if God will. And he sailed to Ephesus. A certain Jew named Apollos, born in Alexandria, an elegant man and mighty in scripture, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and talked diligently to the things of the Lord, knowing on the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the will of God most perfectly. And we go to Romans 16 in verse 3. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers, in Christ Jesus. Amen. Verse 4. Who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also our churches of the Gentiles. Verse 4. Father, we thank you today for your spirit, your Holy Spirit. Father, as we teach this lesson, Lord, Lord, give us knowledge and give us, give us knowledge, Lord, and give us clarity. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. The people, places, and time, they was in Ephesus. There was a principal Roman city of Asia. Ephesus was a strategic commercial city and major religious center. Paul remained in Ephesus for three years on his third missionary journey. But the word spread throughout that region. Paul ministry heard a sale of magic items and images leading to actual riot. After this, Paul left and went to Macedonia and returned only for a brief visit for the, with the elders several miles outside the city, Paul wrote a letter to the Ephesians church while in prison in Rome. So he on come Apollos. We have another one that's come on Apollos. He was an Alexandrian Jew who came to Ephesus in, in 52 AD. He had had an un adequate understanding of the story of Jesus and profound understanding of the story of Jesus and a profound understanding of the Old Testament. The scriptures say he was elegant, he was elegant, I could articulate and enthusiasm as he preached the truth as he knew it. However, he liked the knowledge about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and the baptism. But Priscilla and Aquila patiently instructed Apollos, filling the gaps in his knowledge. As a result, Apollos went on to become a powerful proclaimer 
and defend of the Christian faith. Our background is the gospel writer and author of Acts of the Apostle portrays the husband and wife team of Aquila and Priscilla as an ideal model of Christianity. They are friendly, hospitable, and generous. Aquila, Aquila was a tent maker who traveled extensively throughout the New Testament world with his wife Priscilla. Some scholars suggest that Priscilla inherited wealth and held tremendous influence in her community. The, the Bible does not say how Paul met this couple, but it's clear that Apostle found formed a friendship with Aquila and Priscilla. Through their influences and friendship, Paul was able to continue his ministry journey while leaving a faithful ministry team in Ephesus to preach the gospel of his, his and Jesus. Be a half. How has a friendship with another Christian family or friend helped you faithful journey? It has helped me a lot to have someone to uh, be part of the ministry uh, with their knowledge and, and putting it with your knowledge. The Lord allows that to happen. Um, I think it's divine. Um, I think it's divine connection. Uh, season of the time that helped you to do some things that you're short in, the other person comes along and does that. So I accept that. Um, I accept that other people because I don't know it all and we don't know everything. So God allows all of us, if we allow His Spirit, allow His knowledge, allow His working things, I call it, He has a chest. He's sitting up there with a uh, chess card. And playing chess, cause chess is more harder to play than checkers. So I say he's he he's working a chess game. So Paul's first journey in 18 months in Corinth uh, was with Aquila and his wife Priscilla, as I said, who was expelled expelled from Rome on a decree against the Jews of the Emperor Claudius. Corinth had a, a reputation for being a city of immorality. And the statement to act like a Christian Corinthians was used as a synonym for sexual immorality. But being at the same tent making craft, Paul soon made contact with them and they also became partners in evangelism. At uh, the East Point of Corinth, a servant church had been established in Rome, Romans 16 and 1. After several attempts to reach the Jews of Corinth, Paul turned his attention to the Gentiles. Opposition to Paul's ministry preaching compels him to move out of the synagogue and to hold his meeting next door at the home of Titus. Um, the preaching officer of the synagogue became a believer. The narrative also just the Christians were viewed as disturbers of good order by some officials. They were making too much ruckus. There's too much confusion. And, and, and so Paul remembers how the sovereign civilian hands of God preserved the life of his faithful servants and a part of petition of safekeeping and further blessing. So he had his hair cut as a vow of gratitude. <laughs> Nevertheless, the temple, one of the seven wonders of the world, had been built outside the walls of Roman province, providence as a temple of Art Artemis. It's a sign of Ephesian, Ephesus greatness, displayed of 100 columns. Oh, that is beautiful. And some 60 feet high with marble blocks cemented together by a gold incense of mortar. Mm, that sounds very elegant. That sounds very uh, beautiful. But Paul departed with Aquila and Priscilla from Ephesus, where he leaves them, and continued on Antioch and Syria. In Ephesus, they heard Apollos, a preacher who had uh, followed John the Baptist. Apollos is said to be an eloquent, learned man, well-versed in the Old Testament. However, he was steeped in the philosophy and uh, a method of Corinthian, of Alexandria. So his author acts, Luke views Apollos as a Christian whose understanding of the faith is incomplete. Apollos for me with the life and the teaching of Jesus, but he, know, he, he only knew about the baptism of John Baptism that does not convey the spirit. After in the structures of a Priscilla and Aquila, Apollos preaches Jesus the Messiah. 
and and uh, the a message identical to Paul. So he learned about the Holy Spirit through Priscilla and Aquila. At the close of the letter to the Romans, the Apostle Paul lists in the ministry is listed in the ministry team in verse three through four, Romans chapter 16, three through four. And the Apostle Paul greeted 26 people by their name. At the top of the list, the ministry team, Priscilla and Aquila. But he refers to the couple as my helpers in Christ Jesus. Uh, they fellow workers. Uh, they love and aid when Paul arrived to Corinth. So he gave credit to his fellow worshiper. And he referred to them as helpers in Christ Jesus. But the apostle said that the couple, the couple laid down their own necks. They risked their lives on, on his behalf. <laughs> the scripture does not record the incident when he, that this took place, but at some point, the couple was willing to sacrifice their own life for the gospel. So that's, 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 really, that's really great there, that these two people struck their neck out to help Paul. Paul affirms the gratitude for the couple by adding also the churches of, of Gentiles take them. This showed that Paul considered Priscilla, Priscilla, Priscilla and Aquila work so intensely that every church started by a non Jew one owes gratitude to them. Question I have after reading this lesson many people believe that working with one spouse professionally or in the ministry can cause problems in the home because work problems. Our ministry disagreements follow the couple home and cause friction. Do you believe this? Um, I don't, but I do know they do probably do have some disagreements at some time, but they're able to uh, sort out those uh, disagreements. And if they have the same teaching, the same thought, the same vision, I think it can be, uh, I would love to have a team. I love to see a team work together. I don't know what, what it goes behind the closed doors, but I know they work together as a ministry. And I, I really think they can do that with the love of God in their lives and with Christ being and the Holy Ghost being a helper and they loving each other. And on the same level, one is working along with the other one side by side, not one before, one behind. But I really think that a team, a husband and wife team can really do some great wonders. Number two question is, what are some reasons people do not mentor young people? How should these issues be resolved? Well, everyone is not meant to teach. Everyone is not meant to be a mentor. I was, I've been a, a, a youth ministry minister for a long time before I became a pastor. But I, I love children. I took them all over the place. And it was really, a, it's really a, it's really a, I um, want to say a, a um, journey that that really you have to get that's a lot of sacrifices that you have to make because you you have to try to be uh, that mentor that person that they can go to when they need your help and and you got to teach them and learn them how um, help them say in the right way but you know to teach them uh, the way of things should be going and and teach them learn them how you just know, live life and they looking up to you so it's Mentor mentorship is pretty is really is really hard, but if you have the vision in your mind and you really have the love of Christ in your heart and have a love for children, uh, love for young adults, I really think that it could be done. It, re it really could be done. And a lot of people don't like young people because they say you can't teach young people stuff, but some old people you can't teach them to think either. But I just think that you know being a mentor is awesome. I remember, I'll leave this story with you. I remember when I was uh, 12, my dad I would, mother I always had a place for me. Mother and my dad always had me a car because I was a, I played the piano with uh, I think two or three keys I've learned. I didn't take music, but the Holy Spirit learned me, taught me how to play because my dad was a minister and he, and back then uh, it was hard to get musicians. And the Lord allowed me through the Holy Spirit to learn how to play by ear. 
So I was a musician for a little while, a long time, really. And that's how I, uh, in school, I was a musician for this church called uh, St. Rest. And I put it on Facebook. I had like, it was 50 children, 50 children. And I was 12 or 13 myself. Actually, I, I think I played for them until I got about 16. And all those young people at that time who was youngsters, who was a little, little younger than I am, uh, now uh, I see them and it's, it, it, it does things when they come up and say, and say how you doing, or smile. And it's like you are really growing up with them, but you're actually getting that respect. Uh, actually, they see where you came from. So no matter what anybody says about you, they know you win. So I actually think that a mentor life is really, uh, it's not really all, it's not all bad, but it's really good because later on you see the fruits of your labor. Um, so I'm a preachers now, they might look at me and you know, they may be in different faith, but they're preachers now. Some are uh, teachers, some are doing the best they can. Some, er you know, every one of them are doing well. And I see them all the time on Facebook. And I really just really warms my heart to know that that little uh, time that I spent playing the piano, spending time, sometimes staying out night with um, having girl night over, uh, going to the ball games, doing different things, going to the ball games on at night on, at, at the basketball game, being that mentor, being that person who stuck stuck out and helping others to come along and have other people come along, like other older adults came along and helped. And, but we know we had a little ministry going. And, and um, so it really, mentorship really does work. It really does pays off. And um, I just think that to be a mentor, it really takes, um, it really takes, the love of God. It really takes, that's a gift within itself, I believe. I believe it's a gift that God gives you. You have to love yourself and then love others. And a liberating lesson I learned from this, this lesson is that Christian homes and solid Christian family remain two of the best tools for spreading the gospel. Husband and wife team can be a tremendous blessing for the body of Christ. The faithfulness of people like Priscilla and Aquila make missionary uh, make ministry a joy for others. The effectiveness of the ministry says a lot about their personal relationship with each other and with God. But their hospitality becomes the doorway of salvation for many. But this is the way of the enemy fights so hard against marriages. More than half of marriage in the United States end in divorce. But list some of the positive features and negative hindrance that can affect husband and wife, business and partnership and marriage. As I looked at that, there are some negative and that, but the positive outweigh the negative. Some people leave each other, some people get divorced, some people just stay and keep right on working and be able to fight the war and be able to fight the things that are, are going on. So me, myself, <laughs> I have been uh, like Paul, I guess I, I um been uh, by myself, not really by myself, but doing this ministry, not with a tag along person, not with a husband, not with a not, not with a husband, or not with a helpmate, but or to help meet uh, people that are come and help meet the need of the Lord through them working with me on a personal and professional level, and being uh, working in Christ, you know, person as a friendship. I had to be with friends and able to work with them uh, on a professional level. And God has those, like a Priscilla and Aquila uh, couples come along. I've, I've been uh, working with a lot of couples and uh, open the ministry to different churches and different things like that. But in today's lesson, Priscilla and Aquila took young Apollos on their wing and, and mentored him in the gospel. Ex examine your life to see who you're influencing in the body of Christ. If you cannot think of anyone, ask God to help you make a specific contribution to someone's life this week. Perhaps making a phone call or writing a letter to lift someone's spirit is a good place to start. Hallelujah. Every week, I this week is kind of rough because of the, of the ice and the snow, but every week I send someone a card thanking them for the, what they have done for me in the ministry. 
and they have texted me back on Facebook, inboxed me, thank you so much, thinking of me. And at that time, they really needed that card. So that's my ministry too, giving thanks, being appreciative of people who have been a part of my ministry. So that has been my New Year's uh, thing this year, 2021. Give out a card every week. I send a card out to someone, a pretty card. I might have my sometimes I might have just two dollars and have a little joke. My last two dollars, and and it's just my name be that. It might just be a card inside the card. It might be a little flower or something inside the card. It's a card that is, you know, people said is is today in this time. I know I'm talking long, but I'm gonna stop apologizing. Spirit told me to stop doing it. But the day and time, it's, it's hard to get a letter in the mail. It's hard. When was the last time you wrote a letter? <laughs> Every week, I write someone a letter and thank them for being a part of my ministry. Yes, I have. And that's going to be a part of, of, of a way of letting people know that they appreciate you being a mentor in their you. It was a mentor in your life and I'm a good place and that's a good place for me to start uh thinking people a good place for me to start uh uh, uh really we all in, we all at home we're not going anywhere if we go to go to the grocery store whatever some people are going out but being at home we can do more more work in the, in the bible more studying doing some things online the lord allows to have line online schools online stuff things so what was the last time you got a letter i have this lady every holiday she sends me a card every holiday and i said oh my goodness and it makes you feel really appreciative appreciated that they appreciate you enough to send you a card and then at christmas time i have cousins that send me a card every year no matter what, they send a card every year. So it's something about being uh, hospitable. And if you being, if you really was a person in your ministry that really appreciated people and was a, a hospital, a very humble and very hospitable to them, I they appreciate that. Let me get on back with the lesson. But what I liked it was when the Lord allowed them to come together. Priscilla and Aquila and Paul, all three was tent makers. They they had the same craft, and and he and he stayed with them, for uh, for they uh, occupation was they was tent makers. So what attracted Paul to the couple was was they had a shared skill. In Greek, the phrase they had the same craft, and uh, like Paul, Priscilla and Aquila were tent makers. They they worked with their own hands to support themselves. Paul was a stranger in Corinth. He supported himself by tent making and would take nothing from the converse because he knew that false teachers might rise among them and accuse him of being greedy. He didn't even ask for, he didn't ask for even any money. He just did it out of his heart. A tent making was a possible trade. Soldiers' tents were made of a cheap yet durable cloth made from goat hair and leather skin and various animals sewed together. Other tents, hallelujah, was canopies made of linen and other materials was erected in the summer in the summer. So to shade and screen people from the heat of them. Although Paul was a scholar, he was taught a trade to earn a living like every Jewish male child. So no matter what we we preach the gospel, we all have some kind of trade that we can make money to help us. Some people want to say we're greedy. <laughs> but no matter what someone still say we're greedy. But in verse 18, uh, Paul tarried there yet a good while and then took, lit, took his leave of the brethren and sailed this to Syria and with him, but Priscilla and Aquila, having shown his head and and censure, uh, for he was had a vow. So in other words, when, they left, when he left, they left too. Um, Priscilla and Aquila was present in the synagogue and had found Paul's inter in invitation to join his evangelistic journey irresistible so they follow along with him and they left with him 
And he came to Ephesus and left them there. And he, be, he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. So after he, uh, after they left with him, they found he found them a place to, to be, at Ephesus. And then they met the uh, Apollos. I'm just reviewing in Alexander. He was very elegant in the scripture, but he would liken something. He would liken the Holy Spirit. But they, he, he was taught that. They taught uh, Priscilla and Aquila instructed him about being fervent in the spirit. And then I think after he had that teaching of the Holy Spirit, he was very fervent and, and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing the baptism of John. So he, after he got that knowledge, he taught and expounded upon the word. He was a great speaker, a great preacher, a great evangelist at that time. So after all of that, after Priscilla and Aquila was called to the ministry, after they was being uh, expanding the ministry to Ephesus, they was very, I, I, I learned this lesson. I used to hear about Priscilla and Aquila and they was a great couple. And I really lo love this lesson. I really love this lesson that it's letting me know that a couple can be, they can work together in the ministry and they can uh, do things because the Lord has a way of making things work out. So hope you got some of that lesson. If you still with me, that lesson this week out of Priscilla McQuillan and you be blessed.